these groups where these people are people are doing 5,000 points a day and it's like- so we're about a minute early. Uh, bien, 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 bien. Uh, vamos a comenzar en un minuto. We're going to start in a minute. Um, I had kind of, well, I do have some fixed plans for today, but I kind of have a couple of things um, that I think we, if, if we have time after our plans, we may go into a bit. Mm-hmm. Um because I think there are a couple of things confusing people. And, and if we don't get time for it tonight, we'll start off spring with that. But, you know, that that whole, why do I need que or qual or lo que or el que or la que, all that stuff, which actually some of that is not a big deal. Um, unless you're doing a lot of writing, formal writing like business writing, mm. but, like the we King, all plan on but the King <laughs> Quan thing, but that is in its absolute root filters down to the K and Quan thing, um, which is, well, rather a big can of worms, although easy, sort of. Yeah, isn't that always a thing? Oh, that's easy. And then everybody goes, hmm, that wasn't so easy. Um, <laughs> But Ken Kuala are actually kind of easy to see, but they're way easier to see from examples because I know we have rules, but a lot of us read our English interpretation into rules. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard for us not to do that. So therein lies some of the problem. But we're going to do most of our work tonight with El pasado, con el pasado. And I think we're going to get a start. Sí, vamos a empezar, vamos a empezar. Primero, primero. Um, había, había dos videos de la semana pasada. Uh, we had two videos from last week. So I want to stop, start uh, before... Um, before we have the lesson, before we have you talking about uh, un pariente favorito, favorite relative, and see if you had any questions on these two videos. This one with Alma, she was talking about being a student. Si sí, su experiencia de ser una estudiante de in, intercambio. Intercambio es exchange. Un estudiante de intercambio en Estados Unidos. Um, okay. Oh, bueno, si, sí, Jan, dime. Well, I liked that video because she spoke very slowly and it was like, you know, my my summer vacation for idiots. So I loved it. But my, a question that Fred had was whenever they said Estados Unidos, it was E-E-U-U. Yeah. Is that C-C-C. a standard abbreviation for it is, Estados Unidos? Or was it that is the absolutely the standard abbreviation. And since I now know that the chat box does not show you anything on the recording, I will put a a up here. Uh, we are used to this, uh-huh. maybe with or without the periods. So some people use it, some don't. But in Espanol, here is the abbreviation that is the equivalent to Estados Unidos. Okay. Why is it E-E-U-U? E-E-U-U. Por qué? Why? Why is it that? Uh, the only thing I can give you, which may not be satisfying, but it's estados because we have more than one state. Uh-huh. Therefore, two E's. Oh. <laughs> Unidos. <laughs> this is kind of what I've been told, that it represents that there's more than one state that we are a country, one country of 50 states. But Mexico so, has states. They do. And actually, their formal title for the country is Estados Unidos de Mexico. But, mm. almost, but almost everybody just says Mexico. <laughs> those who live in Mexico and those who live outside of Mexico. So Estados Unidos de Mexico 
is the formal title for the country formally, uh, but everybody just says Mexico. And uh, that in Spanish, you will always see, no matter which Latin American or Spain or whatever, Islas Canarias, uh, doesn't matter where, any Spanish speaking country, they will give it as E E U U. It is because we are states united. So that's perhaps not a very interesting answer to the question, but that is the answer to the question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, is there any other question about Alma's video about being an exchange student, something you didn't understand? Did you understand like what, why she used predator imperfect in most of those examples? Did that make sense? Kind of. I had to I had to go through very slowly to kind of go, OK, so that's an event because I can hear your voice in my head. I know that is <laughs> saying that is not an event. And um, OK, so that's a description. So it's imperfect. I mean, it's it's slow going. Would <laughs> it help for me to play it and do a, 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 a live play by play? See, I'm getting one oh. big C. Um, yeah, I see? mean, yeah. I'm, or is that too boring to do that to replay it? Oh, no, no see? it's never. It's never boring. To okay, have somebody who knows what they're talking about. These yeah. are two. Uh, these two videos are very, very different kinds of videos. Same in that they have a lot of past tense. Mm -hmm. Similar in, uh, uh, well, similar in that they are past tense, but different in the kind of content they have. Uh, one being a very kind of more fact oriented, one being um, more uh, oriented around somebody's personal experience. Okay, voy a cambiar mi pantalla. I'm going to change my screen out so that I can. Para que, para que yo pueda ver aquí, so I can see here. I, y vamos a compartir. Okay, we're going to do kind of a blow by blow. Play, by, play a, 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 yeah, uh -huh. well, live play. Okay. Uh, eh, yo tenía un profesor de conversación. Oh, I'll try to back her up and trying to cut the intro. Sí. Okay. Cuando yo era adolescente. Cuando era adolescente. Big, big, big Q. 100% of the time when you talk about age, whether it's a specific number or, or uh, young or old, we use imperfecto because it's a description. The only way you do not, the only way you do use preterite for age is if somebody says, it was my birthday, because that's an event. Yeah. Cumplí, cumplí 60 años, el blah, 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 de, el 5 de noviembre. Cumplí 60 años el 5 de noviembre. You know, I turned. 60 on November 5th. That's an event. But anything else, anything else that says young, old, or, you know, when I was X number of years old, it's going to use imperfecto. Okay. Me gustaba mucho aprender inglés. Me gustaba mucho aprender inglés. Gustaba. I liked learning English. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that's what I used to do. Okay. So, gustaba. Right? If you finish reading a book and somebody says, hey, how was that book? Then it's, ah, este libro me gustó mucho. This book, yeah, I liked it a lot. But that's not really talking about what I used to do. Oh, hey, I just finished that book. And yeah, I liked it. But if somebody says, ¿Qué te gustaba de adolescente? What did you like as a teenager? Well, now you're talking about what you used to like when you were a teenager. So, me gustaba aprender inglés. I liked learning English. It talks about a continual process that happened over a long, long period of time. We don't know how long. A bunch of time, a lot of years. Okay. Eh, yo tenía un profesor de conversación.
Ah, tenía un uh, uh, profesor. I had a teacher. I had a teacher. I did not give birth to the teacher. The only, the only way I can use, you know, tuvo and preterito is if I gave birth to something or if I received something. She didn't receive the teacher. She had a teacher. You know, all those things, guys, are descriptions. I had a teacher. Well, I had a teacher isn't an event. It's something that I had. How long? I don't know. Long time. A while. Those are all indefinite. That's why they fit into imperfecto. I had a teacher. There's no beginning or end to that thing of I had a teacher. I just had a teacher. Australiano, un profesor nativo que venía a mi casa los fines de semana y yo podía practicar inglés con él. Y oh, okay. Uh, oh, I'm going to try to turn on that. Uh, uh, I was able... I was able to practice English with him. Okay. Uh, podía practicar inglés con él. I was able to practice with him. Venía a mi casa. He used to come to my house. She's talking about repeated events because this teacher came to her house like a bunch of times. She didn't count how many times he came. He came 48 times. No, she doesn't know. He just used to come. Yeah. So. Used to do it, used to do it, did it for a long time, all imperfecto. Y un día, mi profesor les dijo a mis... Ah, un día, mi profesor les dijo a mis padres. One day, there's the clue. Uh, my teacher said to my parents, now I've got an event. One day, he said... And he said is much more likely to be preterito because it is much more likely to be an event. We say he said way more than we say, wow, grandpa used to say. No, we, we usually are telling what somebody said to somebody else. And that's an event. It came out of their mouth and boom, it's over. It's easily defined. I said, good morning. Oh, now that's over. It's out of my mouth. That's easily defined, beginning and end. He said that. Yeah. Okay. Pero sí, un día mi profesor de, de, uh, les dijo a mis padres. Padres, que él pensaba que era una buena idea. Ah, él pensaba. He was thinking that it was a good idea. All very vague with time. Therefore, imperfecto que yo fuera a hacer un curso de inglés. That I should go to take a course. Uh, that fuera yeah, is a fuera. past subjunctive. It comes from the fue thing, but it is not a true preterite. Uh, past subjunctive is formed on the preterite tense. The forming that word fuera comes from the word fueron. Okay, so just know that fuera is a past subjunctive. That, guys, I'm going to say is legitimately kind of a hard thing to learn and hmm. would take a, a while. It would probably take us about four lessons to get through past subjunctive because it's a very, it's like the last thing people learn when they learn <laughs> Spanish. Uh, you know, they kind of get a smattering of it in their third year. And then they do it in fourth year. It's like, ooh, this is hard. Uh, so don't worry about the fuera. All it means is he thought it was a good idea that I, if I were to go, if I were to go, yeah. Okay, so it, it talks about an event that was not yet happening at that time. En el extranjero, en un país. Extranjero, abroad. De habla inglesa. In an English-speaking country. Mis padres me preguntaron. Oh, my parents asked me. Hey, preguntar is a lot like decir. Once somebody said something or they asked something, when they, you know, those words came out of their mouth in a very definite period of time. <laughs> they didn't ask over and over. They just, oh, my parents asked. Me preguntaron, they asked me if I wanted something. Si yo estaría interesada. If I would be interested. Un curso de inmersión, de irme a, ah, if I'd be interested in an immersion course. A estudiar a un país de, de habla inglesa. Y yo dije que sí. Yo estaba súper emocionada. Ah, y... yo dije que sí. I said yes. 
notice said, 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 you're hearing dije, dijo, said is a quickly finished, defined activity, said. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's an event. They said it moves the story a little bit this way. And I answered, whoop, yep, that moves it a little bit that way. So, okay. Yo dije que sí, uh, yo estaba súper emo emocionada. I said, yes, I was super excited, but excited is how you feel. And most feelings wind up being in imperfecto because they are descriptions. I felt excited. I was excited. Y me encantaba la idea. Oh, I loved the idea. Me encantaba la idea. The, the idea delighted me, literally. Uh, I loved the idea. Again, it's how she feels or how she felt, how she felt about that. So, imperfecto. Así que yo decidí irme. I decided that really moves it forward. Oh. Parents asked me. I answered, I decided. We have a little movement forward each with each one of those. It moves the story forward just a little bit. Okay. Decidir generally most of the time gets used in preterito because, okay, made up my mind. That's it. It's done. It's over. Me a hacer un curso de verano. I did a summer course. Estados Unidos. I Estados Mi Unidos. Padre. And notice they abbreviated it. I Estados Unidos. E -E -U -U. Okay. These subtitles are not perfect, but yep. E -E -U -U, Estados Unidos, because that took them less time to type out than Estados Unidos. Una empresa. Oh, my parents found a company. Encontraron, they found. Found happens like that. Okay, it is, yeah. Española que organizaba cursos. Uh, a company that used to organize or was organizing courses. De idiomas en el extranjero, en diferentes países. Different y countries. Yo decidí irme a Estados Unidos porque cuando era muy joven. When mi... I was very young, it's a description of my age. It's got to be imperfecto. Era muy joven. Me interesaba mucho la cultura. Ah, oh, because I was really interested in the culture. Again, it's how she feels. Porque había visto muchas películas americanas. Oh, yeah, I had seen. That's a past perfect. Okay. I had seen lots of uh, American movies. Me gustaba la música. Oh, I like the music. Again, it's how you feel. Americana. Y yo quería ir a Estados Unidos. I wanted to go. And again, wanted, you'll see after today, wanted is how you felt. And we don't have a definite beginning or end to how you felt. Okay. Feelings don't have a definite beginning and end for most of these things, emotional things. Okay. Uh, so, imperfecto. Entonces yo me apunté a un curso I signed up for a course. Oh, well, I decided I signed up. Those kind of actions happen fast, guys. Yeah. Tenía lugar en la costa este. En el... Ah, I signed up for a course that was taking place. Tener lugar is to take place. I know tener means have, but tener lugar means to take place. Tenía lugar. It was taking place on the East Coast. Estado de Pensilvania. Pensilvania. Y en este curso había un, un grupo de... Oh, there was a group. And the group just existed. So it wasn't an, a group is not an event. There was a group. It's got to be imperfecto. The fact that there was a group, that's not an event or an action or an activity. It's just there was a group. So it got to be imperfecto. It's a description alumnos, un grupo de estudiantes de todas las partes de España. Oh, from all parts of Spain. Todos los students. estudiantes de este curso eran españoles. Ah, all of these students were Spaniards. And remember, you had that when we describe objects or people, we usually wind up using era. 
and in this case, it's a plural eran, uh, uh, because we're saying, oh, all these students were Spaniards, and they're just descriptions of, well, what their nationality was. That's not really an event. It doesn't move the story forward. It tells me something about the composition of the group. Describes. Y entonces yo fui a Madrid. Es... Uh, fui a Madrid. I went to Madrid. Okay, there's a definite action. Boom, happened quickly. Ese verano, allí me reuní en el aeropuerto de Madrid. Me reuní. I got together. I met up with. Again, that's an action. I went to Madrid. I met up at the airport. Madrid con el resto de estudiantes. I met up with the other students. De este curso. Y nosotros volamos juntos hasta... Oh, y volamos juntos. We flew together. Well, again, there is a definite event. I went to Madrid. The event moves the story forward. I got together with these people. Ooh, an action. It moved it forward. Uh, we flew. An action. It was over and done in a set number of hours. Okay. A Nueva York. Volamos Nueva York. desde Madrid hasta Nueva York. We Todos los Madrid estudiantes to del curso éramos menores de edad. Oh, we were all minors. Menores de edad. We were all minors. We were all under 21. No éramos adultos. We were not adults. Again, we're talking about age. So whenever we talk about age in any way, shape, or form, we're using imperfecto. Teníamos entre eh, 13 y 17 años. Oh, we were between 13 and 17 years old. Teníamos entre, we were between these ages. Again, we talk about our age, imperfecto, tener en imperfecto. Entonces, con nosotros venía un monitor adulto, un, un acompañante adulto. Oh, so uh, an adult chaperone, monitor adulto, an adult chaperone was coming along. Okay. And acompaña, venía, was coming. You see another verb that talks about coming along, acompañante. Well, that's not really a verb, but it comes from a verb that is acompañar. Acompañarse or acompañar is to accompany, to go along with. En todo momento, desde que salimos de España hasta que llegamos a Estados Unidos. Okay, from the time we left Spain till we got to the U.S., we had this chaperone with us. Y cuando llegamos a Nueva York, el vuelo llegó a Nueva York. Fue... Oh, when we got to New York, the plane got to New York. It's another action with a definite beginning and end. And... It happened, and it's pretty easily defined over with. So, llegamos, we got there. El vuelo llegó. The plane arrived. Pues teníamos que ir hasta Pensilvania. Ah, we had to go to Pennsylvania. Fuimos en autobús hasta Pensilvania, a una zona que estaba cerca de la ciudad de Filadelfia. Okay, so uh, fuimos en autobús. We went by bus, right? Uh, Una zona, an area, sí, que estaba cerca, that was near city of Philadelphia. When we use estar to talk about location in the past, we don't use preterite. Yeah. If I say the store was on the corner, how long was the store on the corner? Do you know when it started being on the corner and when it, uh, was it torn down? You don't know. The, something was there. Uh, somebody Something was or, or, or a city was in a place is not an event that has a beginning and end. It just was there. So because it just was there, I don't know the beginning and the end. I have to use imperfecto. Estar winds up being used way, 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 way more in imperfecto. And especially when you're saying something was in a location. I don't know a beginning and end to that. It's a description of where that person was or where that place was. It's saying it's near the city of Philadelphia is a description of where it was. It's not an event. Okay. Y allí nos esperaban nuestras familias. Ah, our families were waiting there for us. 
So you need to take your cue from the fact that she says, nos esperaban nuestras familias. Our families were waiting for us as we came up to this. She, she means they were waiting, that they were waiting before they got there. And it's kind of a background action thing. So she chooses to use imperfecto to say, oh, that was going on for a while. I don't know how long they were waiting. They were waiting and then boom, we got there. There they were in the background waiting before we got there, you know, so imperfecto. Cada estudiante tenía una familia americana. Every student had an American family. Tener goes into imperfecto way, 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 way more than preterito. You had something that is not an event. It is a fuzzy beginning and end. We don't know. You had a family for a while. We don't know how long. Imperfecto. Eh, con la que iba a quedarse. Entonces, yo... Ah, with, uh, a family with which uh, we were going to go stay with. Iba a quedarse. We were going to, or that I was going to stay with, or that each student had somebody that he or she was going to stay with. Iba a quedarse. Con la que iba a quedarse. With which, and that la que talks about the family. Con la que iba a quedarse, a family with which they were going to stay. Cuando llegamos a Pensilvania. When we got to Pennsylvania. Conocí a mi familia. Conocí a mi familia. Uh oh, and now it's the first time. I met. Conocí does not mean I knew my family. I met up. I met for the first time. Conocí a mi familia. I met my family. Conocer is a verb that changes rather drastically in meaning between pretérito and imperfecto. Pretérito, I met, first time ever. Conocía, I knew. Oh, I knew him. It's a mental process. How long did I know him? Oh, I don't know, a long time. Yeah, that's very different. So it's got to be very different. Conocía, because we don't know how long. But conocí, oh, I met for the first time. So she's flagging you that I met these people. Era una familia muy normal. A real normal family description. Con el padre y la madre, los dos eran fisioterapeutas. Y... Oh, and she talks about what their professions were. They were physical therapists. Y ellos tenían dos hijos. Y... They had two kids. Okay, so she's not talking about this woman birthing a baby while she was there, that she had a baby. No, no, they had two kids. Yeah, for a long time. Y una hija. Los niños tenían nueve y siete años. Oh, the kids were a certain age. Imperfecto. Y la niña tenía tres años. Entonces yo los conocí allí. Y ellos me... Ah, and not I met them there, I got to know them there. Los conocía allí, I got to know them. She purposely uses conocía, not to talk about the meeting anymore, because that just happened. I got to know them. I became familiar with them because we lived together. Los conocía. Me llevaron a su casa. Y yo estaba muy... Me llevaron a su casa. They took me to their house. Oh, they packed me in a car and we drove off. That was a definite activity that happened between the airport and the house. Pretty definite beginning and end. Me llevaron a, a su casa. They took me to their house. Okay. Estaba muy contenta. I was really happy how she felt. Imperfecto. All that, all that. Land of feelings, land of emotions, tends to fall into that bucket of imperfecto because they're descriptions and they don't have a cut and dried beginning and end as a general rule. Sometimes they do. You know, if you want to say somebody got mad at a certain point, it could be preterito, but to say somebody was feeling this way, it falls into that description bucket.
So, estaba muy contenta, imperfecto. Contenta, era una casa muy bonita. Muy... Oh, was a pretty house. Oh, describing a house in the past. You heard last week. When we describe an object in the past, imperfecto. Era una casa muy bonita. It was a really pretty house. Muy grande, muy cómoda. Comfy. Y yo tenía mi propia habitación. I had my own room. I just had that room. That's not an event. It's something I had. There's no beginning or end of that. I had a room. Y al día siguiente, nosotros... Ah, the next day. And now, ooh, where's... Oh, if I say the next day, something happened. Ooh, she's going to tell us of an event. Empezamos las clases de inglés. We started English classes. Empezamos. Al día siguiente, the following day, we began English classes. And now she's defining the next day and she's telling you an event. Oh, we started classes. De lunes a viernes, todo, Monday to Friday, todo el grupo de estudiantes se reunía en, en, un, en una escuela. All the kids would get together, would meet up at, in a school because they did this, you know, all the days they had classes, a lot. Y todos íbamos a clase juntos. And we used to go to class together. Eran clases de inglés, pero no eran clases tradicionales. Oh, they were... Uh, yeah, they were English classes, but they were not traditional classes. Oh, she's describing. Imperfecto. Eran clases muy divertidas. They were very fun classes. Clases con actividades y juegos diferentes. So they did lots of different activities and games. Pero no eran clases tradicionales. But they were not traditional classes. Para estudiar inglés, estudiar gramática. Yeah, they weren't like formal grammar, just knows in the book kind of things. No hacíamos nada de eso. Todo era... We didn't do, oh, we didn't do that, any of that kind of stuff. Now she's describing how their classes used to progress, that they were game and activity oriented. Muy lúdico. Todo era muy entretenido, muy Everything divertido. was really entertaining and fun. entonces yo iba a clase... Todos los días, de lunes a viernes, de 9 de la mañana a 12 del mediodía. Y yeah, she's just, just describing the schedule, okay, what times of the day. Y a las 12, las clases terminaban y... And at 12, the classes would end. They y used to end. Todo el grupo de estudiantes íbamos a hacer una actividad. Cada día era una actividad diferente. Every day was a different activity. So she's talking about these things and her, she's using imperfecto through describing her class day because they repeated certain actions a whole bunch each day they went to class. So because these were repeated and she's not giving you like, you know, oh, we did this for 48 days. I don't know how long we were doing this. It was a repeated activity. So she uses imperfecto. Pues, por ejemplo, algunos días íbamos al cine. Some days we used to go to the movies. O íbamos a la bolera. Or, o a la bolera. piscina. Hacíamos oh, we go... una fiesta en, en la piscina. So, you know, pool activities, muy, theater muy activities. Nos lo pasábamos muy bien. Y... Lo pasábamos muy bien. We used to have a really good time. Lo pasábamos muy bien is... Their way, saying, their way of saying had a good time. We had a good time. We were having a good time. She's describing the progression of her school days, which were done over and over and over for a whole bunch of days. Y, y una vez a la semana, en los Once estudiantes week, hacíamos una excursión. Oh, one day a week, we did an excursion. We did an outing. We did a field trip. Una excursión. Un poco más larga. A little Entonces, longer. Entonces, en estas excursiones, fuimos a visitar Nueva York. Oh, we visited New York one time. 
Fuimos a Filadelfia. Oh, we went to Philadelphia. Fuimos a Washington DC. Oh, we went to the Capitol. Y sí, todos los estudiantes teníamos muchas ganas, estábamos muy emocionados. Oh, we were all really motivated. We really felt like learning. De ver estas ciudades. We were excited to see the cities. Conocíamos estas ciudades de, de las películas y verlas en, en televisión, en las series. Y sí, la verdad es que fue una experiencia muy interesante. Ok, so, looking back on it, wow, that was a really interesting experience, but she said, oh, you know, we got to actually know, we got familiar with these cities that we would see, like in movies and in TV shows. So we, wow, we really got down to it and got, uh, uh, got acquainted with what those cities were like. Y los fines de semana... On weekends, no clase. We, ha we had no class on weekends. Los fines de semana, cada estudiante estaba con su familia. Every weekend, you were with your family. This, each, each student, cada estudiante estaba con su familia. They were with their y families. Mi familia tenía una casa en un lago. Oh, my family had a house on the lake. Una casa de vacaciones en Vacation un lago. Vacation house. O cerca de un lago. Y todos los fines de semana íbamos a esta casa. Oh, so we used to go to this lake house every weekend. Era una casa muy grande. It was a big house. Entonces ellos siempre tenían invitados. So they always had guests. Siempre tenían invitados. They always had guests because it was a huge house. Eh, invitaban a familiares. They would, they would invite family members. Invitaban amigos. Y cada friends. fin de semana había um, unos invitados diferentes. And there were, there were always, and there were, yeah, uh, guests are not an event. Yeah, there were guests, so imperfecto. En la casa del lago. Y bueno, el lago tenía una playa. Ah, uh, oh, the lake had a beach. Eh, así que podías nadar. Podíamos, so you could swim. Podíamos nadar en el lago. We could swim La familia, mi familia tenía un, un barquito, un pequeño. Oh, my family had a little boat. Un barco y salíamos a navegar. Con And el... we would go out, you know, in the boat. Navegar. We would uh, go navigating in the boat. Uh, but you would just probably say we would go riding in the boat. El barco en el lago. También hacíamos paseos. Por oh, we would take walks, strolls, paseos. El campo. In the, y, in the countryside. Sí, la verdad es que era muy bonito. El campo allí era muy bonito. Oh, the, the, the countryside there was really pretty. Yeah. Bonito, muy verde. Y, y me gustaba mucho. Real green. Además, oh. Y me gustaba mucho. I really liked it. I liked that's how I felt about it. I liked it. Más, yo pasé el 4 de julio. Oh, now we got a definite date. El 4 de julio. I spent the 4th of July. La fiesta nacional en Estados Unidos con esta familia en la Casa del Lago. Y bueno, pues hicieron una barbacoa. Oh, they, they made a barbecue. Había una fiesta comunitaria. Oh, there was a little community party. <laughs> sí, yo me lo pasé muy bien. And I had a good time on the 4th of July. She's talking about that 4th of July. Okay. So she switched to some more pretérito for 4th of July because it was a one day thing, right? But, but había una fiesta versus oh, una barbacoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She could have said event. Yeah, she could have put in that, into that. But, you know, uh, here's the actual truth of it. You know, había is way more used way more than hubo, even sometimes with an event. She could have said hubo una fiesta. There was a party. But you know what? Her brain was in description mode. Mm -hmm. So she went with había. So. Their brains are literally going to say, I'm describing. Ooh, había, había, había. I know. Yeah, you would think. So sometimes are those rules real strictly applied with, yeah, no, not with había, not so much. You know, people get carried away in description mode. They'll stick with it and it'll be imperfecto because it's description.
había una fiesta comunitaria. There you go. You're right. y, yeah. sí, fiesta. Yo me lo pasé muy bien. Pero cuando estaba con la familia los fines de semana, pues a veces me agobiaba un poco, me estresaba un poco. Oh, sometimes I got really worn out. I would get all stressed out. ¿Cómo? Porque a yo no tenía a nadie más con quien hablar español. Because I had nobody else to speak Spanish with. Yo tenía que hablar en inglés. I had to speak in English all the time. Todo el tiempo. Y eso a veces era un poco cansado. And that was a little bit tiring sometimes. It wear you out. Uh, me agobiaba, it would wear me out. Because, you know, I had to be thinking hard in Sobre English. Sobre todo porque a veces no comprendía las conversaciones and especially above all sobre todo above all because at times i couldn't un i didn't understand the conversations que pasaban a mi alrededor that las, were going on around me las personas que pues sobre todo los adultos que conversaban a and mi the adults who were conversing around me a veces eh, para mí eran un poco difíciles de entender. So, ooh, sometimes they were hard to understand. Uh, so now, again, she's describing all of this because it happened a bunch of times when she was in the company of adults. Y eso, a veces me sentía un poco agobiada. So sometimes I felt pretty wiped out, tired, overwhelmed. Pero la familia también me prestaba mucha atención. Oh, but the family paid a lot of attention to me. Pasaban mucho tiempo hablando conmigo. They spent a lot of time talking to me. Me llevaban de compras. Oh, they used to take me shopping. Y sí, con ellos yo podía tener conversaciones y sí que comprendía. Uh, so with them, uh, one on one with her family people, she could have conversations and she understood. It's when everybody would get around in a big, big group, all these adults talking fast, probably, yeah, uh, making her head spin. But just with the family one on one, oh, that's okay. Eh, cuando me hablaban a mí directamente. Yeah, when they en spoke general, directly. mi viaje a Estados Unidos fue una experiencia muy positiva. And now she's looking at this as, as it, it's a done experience. It was a positive experience. And she's kind of stepping out. Oh, now I'm done describing. I'm telling you, looking back on that, that was a good experience. Fue una experiencia muy positiva. Okay. Paula talked to you last week about fue when we talk about, about an event that is done and I am now kind of stepping out of the action and looking back on it and pondering what was that like? Mm, fue buena experiencia. Mm, fue mala experiencia. Uh, okay. When I'm just making that judgment state, statement on something that's over, common to go back into pretérito. Fue una experiencia muy positiva. Eh, mi inglés no mejoró muchísimo. My English did not improve like a ton. Eh, aprendí un poco. I learned a little. Pero no fue un cambio radical. It wasn't some big radical change. Solamente estuve en, en Estados Unidos un mes. Uh, and now she tells you, I'm telling you there was a beginning and end to this. I was there for a month. And because she's defining that as un mes, estuve un mes, I was there for a month because she put a beginning and end on it. She chose to say, okay, pretérito, estuve en Estados Unidos un mes. Because she put a def definition that gave it a beginning and end, un mes. Pero la experiencia fue muy positiva porque tuve que adaptarme a una cultura diferente. 
conocí a mucha gente nueva. I met a lot of new people. Hice muchos amigos. I made lots of friends. Y visité muchos lugares interesantes. And I visited a bunch of interesting places. Así que cuando volví a España, so yo, when I returned to Spain, yo tenía muchas cosas que contarle a mis I had lots of things to tell my parents. padres y a mi familia y estaba muy contenta. I was y really esa happy. fue mi experiencia en Estados Unidos. Ok, eso fue. Uh, un poquito mejor, is that a yeah. little bit better, sí? Yeah. Sí, ok, bien, bien. Um, so, yeah. what you want to get to the point of, and, and, and don't, Don't tell yourself, I must get this by the end of this week. Because that's not likely. Uh, I thought I was pretty smart when I was 15. And I learned how to, oh, I know this. I got this. And then the next year, it's like, go. Oh, I didn't have this as much as I thought I had this. And then it's like, oh, I know a little more than I, you know, it, it is a very gradual progression but you what you want to do is you want to listen for people using those two tenses a lot in listening comprehension because the only way it will really sink in is two things if you do a lot of reading and if you do a lot of listening and a lot of listening is probably easier for you you to do via youtube because you don't have to look up a bunch of words. You can get a lot of the meaning from the, both the subtitles and from body language of the person telling the story, yeah? Because um, we do get cues from the body language when people are telling a story. Um, but from lots and lots and lots of listening and some reading, you want to get to the point where you can say, ooh, they're describing things. Oh, here's an event here's another event. And this happened the third, the next, you know, oh, I had ooh, one, two, three things happen in a row, event, event, event. And now, oh, now we're back to description. You want to get to the point where the speaker or the writer is giving you cues as to is the action doing this or is it this? And they're going to use that one tense imperfecto, or the other tense to say this happened. So you take your cue from this is a preterite. It must have been up right away. Decidí. I decided it must have been a, a decision like that. Okay. So you get to the point, um, especially when you're reading, if you do some little bits of reading, where you Go with the flow. You got to roll with the person who's telling you the story. And you get that feel for how quickly. Is it a very defined event with a beginning and an end? Or are they describing things in the background to you? In which case, they're going to use imperfecto. Does that make a little bit of sense? Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. And I know we have all those rules. But I would tell you... With, with a few exceptions, don't try to get chained down by the rules. When people use one tense or the other, they are conveying a feeling. They're conveying this, or they're conveying this, 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 this. They use those tenses for a reason, to give you a feel for the flow. Are they taking a picture? It happened now. Preterito. Oop, this happened now. Or is it a continual, ooh, I see this thing going on around me, imperfecto. There is a lot that, uh, and take your cue from what the storyteller, what tense the storyteller is choosing. See? It will not make 100% uh, sense as a beginner with this tense. But people... You know, we flip back and forth between present and past all the time. So most conversations you have with people will flip back and forth with present and past all the time. Mm 
It's just the way we discuss our lives. We talk about what's going on now, what will happen, what did happen. That's what we do. So good to have an idea that that is coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's coming at you. So that at least you can listen for it. If you cannot produce that perfectly and in a flowing manner yet, that is okay. <laughs> but you should be able to pick up, oh, here are events and here are descriptions. Here are events and here are descriptions. Okay. Game? Okay. Um, I want to get to your descriptions first. Uh, I could flip to the other one, but that was a nice personal story. How about if we have some stories about descripción de un pariente, uh, description of a relative, and see if you can actually maybe put together a few sentences, because it's a hard thing to do. It really is hard. Sí, es difícil. Sí, sí, sí. Bien. Ah, Juanita, dime. On the email that you sent, and I don't have it up here, you said something like papas de mi madre. Los papas de mi madre, sí. So is, does that does that papas mean parents and not potatoes or the Pope? <laughs> yes, papas, papas are not papas. Papas are potatoes, but papas are los papas de mis padres would mean my parents, folks, my grandparents. It's a different way of referring to your grandparents. Los papás de mis padres. My parents, parents. But is the accent mark different for papas versus, yeah, you know? Well, yeah. Papas, whether it's, wow. whether it is papa, one of them, meaning just dad, or mom and dad, you know, and papa is just a little more informal way of saying that, okay? Uh, so in other words, you know, you could say padre, or you can say papa. Well, that's the difference between father and dad. Mm -hmm. Not big deal. But when I make it plural, it means the same thing as padres, just a little more affectionate way of saying padres, mom and dad. So los papás de mis padres, my dad's folks, mm. instead of saying my grandparents. Still means grandparents. Mm. Oh, my dad, you know, uh, we Midwesterners uh, tend to say folks a lot, yeah. So folks would be papas, yeah. uh, kind of like that. But and it, papa, whether it's plural or singular, will always have that accent mark. But papa is something else, right? That's potato. Potato, unless then, unless is el it's papa el papa. Is uh, the el, yeah, el papa is. The Pope, and really, wow, El Papa, that really should be capitalized. I think that one is always capitalized because it is a proper noun. El Papa, the Pope. Okay, but that's El Papa because, you know, they don't let women do this job. Yeah. It will take another thousand years. La Papa <laughs> is just potato. Okay. And by the way, La Papa is what they use in Latin America, in Spain. Patata. Oh, yeah. In Spain, potato is patata, the longer word. In Latin America, most people shorten it to la papa. That's what they do. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, because I'd never heard that. And when I when I um, looked it up, it said the potatoes of my mother. And it's like, <laughs> well, no, that's not what it and it's papas. like to make a mistake. So this is Las papas. L Las papas. Parents. Okay. Bien. Okay. Does somebody have a pariente, a parent they'd like to talk or pariente, a uh, relative, relative they'd like to talk about? I have a trip. Okay. Um, it's cuando yo era una niña, mi tía Stella y mi tío Anton me llevo a un viaje a Ludington, Michigan. Ooh. Conocí a algunos de sus amigos 
que vivían en una granja. Uh, tenían dos hijos de mi edad. Matábamos en un camión y entonces, reco, recogimos cerezas, picking cherries. El vino, ah, ser, ah, sí. El, el viaje fue muy divertido. El viaje fue divertido, perfecto. Now you say, oh, my story is done. Wow, that was fun. Fue divertido. Perfecto, perfecto. Ok, so, um, uh, me llevaron, they took me. Me llevaron, because they were the ones who took me, right? Uh -huh. Me llevaron, they took me. Uh, bien, bien hecho. Sí, bien, sí, uh, recogían cerezas. Cerezas are cherries. Y uh, recoger cerezas es muy común en Michigan. Yo sé, sí, porque yo también recogía uh, cerezas. Yeah, cherry picking season was a thing for us growing up as kids. Excelente. Muy bien. Uh, hiciste bien. You did well. Okay. Yeah. Vale. Alguien más. Anybody else got a relative story? Uh, Karen, dinos. Mi abuelo, el papá de mi mamá, era mi pariente favorito. Siempre tenía tiempo para jugar con sus nietos. A veces él nos llevaba a un museo o a la fiera, o feria estantal para ver a los animales y para comer dulces. Excelente. Sí. Hábitos, hábitos, habits, things you used to do a bunch of times. Who's counting? Because <laughs> we didn't. We just did it a lot, right? Sí. Excelente. Muy bien. Muy bien. Uh, ¿Qué más? What else? Anybody else got another pariente thing? Uh, let, Susana, let's take you next. Uh, cuando era joven. Mi parente favorito era mi primo Miguel. Un verano, Miguel me llevó, llevó un partido de béisbol de las cachorros de Chicago. Ah. En invierno, después de que nevaba, íbamos en trineo en una gran colina en el parque. Ah, sí. Trineo es sled. Sled or toboggan. ¿Ya? Yeah? Sí. Excelente. Sí, muy bien. Muy bien. Trineo. Trineo, buena palabra durante las fiestas navideñas. That's a good thing for Christmas holidays. Trineo is a sleigh or a sled. They, when we talk about uh, Papá Noel, Papá Noel, Santa Claus, uh, uh, tiene un trineo. He has a sleigh. Uh, excelente. Muy bien. Uh, los cachorros, uh, the cubs. Uh, bien, yeah. Uh, went to some Cubs games, okay? Y lle uh, me llevó, he took me, yeah, because he transported me over to the stadium. See, ¿Sí? Wrigley, okay. Bueno, uh, uh, Jan, ¿tienes algo? Now, um, this is Federico. His wife didn't do a thing. But this is <laughs> a, I'm, I'm amazed he did because you had sure. company. Yeah. Well, he's he's um he's on it. He's determined. Okay. All right. So this is him. Um, mi pariente favorito era mi papá. Cuando él iba la granja, papá a veces me llevaba y estaba feliz. Un día puse a la serpiente en su camión y lo pensaba muy gracioso. Ah, ok. Uh, oh, sí, granja es, es uh, farm. Sí, uh -huh. granja, la palabra yeah. granja es farm. Sí, y uh, puse un serpiente. I put a snake en su camión, en his truck. Truck. Ah, and sí. 
saying. He thought it was gracioso. <laughs> and um, por cierto, mi mamá siempre me amaba. My mom always loved me. Of course, sí. Siempre me amaba. Sí. Excelente. Excelente. Bueno, hay otra historia de un pariente. Any other relative story? Ah, Susana. And then you'll okay. take Kathleen. Oh, Kathleen first? Or me? No importa. Oh, Susan first. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mi pariente favorito era mi tío Franco. Ah. Tío Franco es su esposa, Francesca. Is that the Francis, female Francis? Would uh, that be oh, Francesca? Oh, well, if uh, uh, ooh, uh, Francesca, was her name really Francesca? Yes. Well, no, I her name was Francis. Whatever. And my oh. uncle's name was also. Francis. Francisca. Oh, Uncle oh. Frank and Aunt Francis. Francis. Francisca is más como Francia. italiano. Sí. Oh, okay. uh, Francisca, Francisca. Some Francisca. people call it uh, Cisca for short. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So Francisca, uh, BBN, cerca de mi casa. Uh, cada vez que Tio Franco visitaba, uh, me daba cinco dolores. Lo que me hacía muy feliz. Uh, una vez, él hizo un trineo con volante. Uh, so he, he made a sled with a steering wheel, like a, like a car steering wheel. Uh, él siempre era divertido. Okay. He was Ex always fun. To, yes. Okay. Era divertido. Sí. Era divertido. He was a fun guy. Sí. Okay. That's like how he always was. So it's era divertido. Sí. Es descripción. That's a straight description. Sí. Exacto. Bueno. Ah, a ver. Ah, Kathy. Tienes algo. Dinos algo. Tell us something. Cuando era niña, una de mis parientes favoritos era mi tía abuela, hermana de mi abuela. Tía abuela is great aunt. Oh, okay. Yeah. Grandmother's sister. Yeah. Era maestra de tercer grado. She was a third grade teacher for many years. Cuando ten, teníamos or teníamos, don't know. Well, teníamos. Yeah. Teníamos, teníamos fiestas, okay. teníamos fiestas familiares with family gatherings. Mi tía, abuela, hablaba con los niños instead of the old talking to the adults. Y nos enseñaba canciones. canciones. She taught us songs. Mm. Me disfrute cantando canciones con ella y con mis hermanos y mis hermanos y primos. Okay. Sí. And probably... None of us could sing on tune. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and you said enjoyed, right? Disfruta. Yeah. Uh, probably disfrutaba because uh, it wasn't a one-time thing, right? Well, I knew I had something wrong there. <laughs> disfrutaba. Disfrutaba. Well, you know, it's yeah, not that it's I, wrong. I that but wrong. If, it's if funny. You, Spanish English translation instead. Yeah, if you Just enjoyed it a lot, if you enjoyed it a lot, disfrutaba would probably be more. Yeah, yeah. you know, you're plugged into that description because you did it a bunch of times, right? Yes. So imperfecto is a bunch of times, but ah, who's counting? Yeah. I was going to correct that right before we started our class, but I didn't get my pen. Well, there you go. So, you know. <laughs> Imperfecto, okay. think of it as either description or, well, a bunch of times, but who's counting, right? No, it was but always, we always did it. Yeah, and the, well, there you go. And, but, you know, preterito is definite time, definite number of times or, you know, yeah, definite, yeah. yeah. So, por ejemplo, por ejemplo, um, podría decir, si uh, fui, fui a Las Vegas tres veces. Fui a Las Vegas tres veces. I know I went to Las Vegas this many times in my life. Fui a Las Vegas tres veces. 
right? So I would really use fui because I know it was only three times, right? Okay. And they were each three definite trips with different people. So I would be, I would be signaling to you, oh, there were definitely, you know, the, only this many times, not and so that you wouldn't get the idea of, well, I used to go to Vegas every year. No, nothing like that. Tres veces, three times. Okay. Bien. Bueno, excelente. Alguien más? Anybody else got a parent story? Ah, Patricia, dinos algo. Um, cada noche buena, mi tío favorito se vestía de Papa Noel. Ah. Y pasaba <laughs> regalos a mis primos, a mis hermanos y a mí. Cuando era muy joven, pensé que mi tío era realmente Papa Noel. Ah. Pero más tarde me di cuenta de que solo era mi tío Nicolás. Ah, bien. And <laughs> that realizing it was really him is me di cuenta de, I realized. Oh, it hit me, yeah? Okay. Uh, bien. But probably pensaba que era, I used to think. Ah, mejor, mejor decir, pensaba que era Papá oh. Noel. I thought he was Santa Claus because it's how you used to think. Pero me di cuenta, but I realized okay. that one time. Si? ¿Sí? Bien? Okay. Uh, ¿Entiendes la diferencia? Do you understand the difference between that? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, pensar can go either way. I will use it in preterite if I mean, uh, ooh, this thought suddenly came inside my head, right? But if I would say something like, well, wow, I oh, I used to think math was so difficult in school. Then it's pensaba que las matemáticas eran muy difíciles, sí. Bien? Okay, so depend. It really depends on the feel you're giving it, you know, the rolling along versus the one, one, one time. Okay, fantástico. Alguien más? Anybody else got a parent? Uh, ah, ah, Marlene, dinos algo. Mi pariente favorita era mi abuela. Ella decía muchas historias tontas. <laughs> uh, siempre se reía y por eso no podría terminar los historias. Aha, okay. Does that make sense? Sí. Okay. Uh, I'll get, algo más? You have anything more? No. Oh, okay. Okay. Bien. Gracias, Marlene. Muchas gracias. Bueno. Okay. Alguien más? Anybody else got some tidbit to add here? Sí o no? Okay. Jane, bien. Dinos algo, Jane. Okay. I, mi tía Lula era es mi favorita porque ella sabía hacer muchas cosas que yo quería aprender. Ella sabe coser, hacer comida, manejar el carro, podía atrapar, destripir, freír peces. Cada vez que iba a su casa aprendía algo. Cada vez que iba a su casa, aprendí a, a aprendí a algo. Every time I went to her house, I was learning something. Ah, and you know, usually when you say I learned something, you know, or I discovered something, it goes into preterite. But here, it really is appropriate to use it as aprendía because every time I used to go, I would learn something is what, your ideas really, you know, that's where your idea is going with that. See? Better than? Okay. Okay. Fantástico. Me gustan mucho las ideas aquí. Wow. These are really good ideas. Ustedes hicieron bien. You sincerely did a really good job with these because th it is much harder to, uh, to actually speak and put these ideas into your words than it is to work at understanding what somebody is saying. Es, es difícil. It is really, really hard. Hicieron bien. You did well. Um, 
Bien, ok. Uh, a ver, I want to show you. ¿Dónde está? Oh, vamos. Wow. Ok, I have a page that was not being very cooperative here. Ok. Um, since this is the last... rather than scrolling through everything. So this is, since this is the last session for winter, I want to follow up. We talked about uh, last time some verbs that often go into preterito, you know, decir. Yo dije, I said, el dijo, he said, ella dijo, she said. Yeah, things that are often preterite. Uh, I want to talk a lot, uh, we'll talk a bit, uh, showed you some verbs that definitely change their meanings, that you know the verb is one definition as the infinitive, but it's, it's going to do, this, that one verb will do a flippy flop in meaning. Some verbs, because of the nature of what action the verb depicts, uh, for lack of a better word, the Uh, the meaning of the verb will change quite a bit from preterito to imperfecto because of that nature of event-driven versus description or repeated action thing with imperfecto. So verbs like... Conocer. Go. No. Ser. And you don't need it that slowly. Estar. Es Estar. Bien. Uh, like poder. Like querer, oh, like no querer, because it's going to be something else. Like saber, like tener, change their meanings a lot in between imperfecto and preterito. So on the left, uh, conocer to know in a preterito and preterite is very specific. It means met because preterite has a beginning and an end. Knowing somebody is a mental process. <laughs> And, you know, I knew him could mean I knew him for God knows how long. Uh, but a first time meeting means we have to use conocer in preterito. Okay. Uh, estar in preterito, which is a very odd form uh, because it doesn't look like Well, it looks a little like estar, but it doesn't look like it's a right conjugation. Um, it will mean more like beca became, get. Uh, estuve enfermo. Estuve is the yo form of estar in preterito. Estuve, S-T-U-V-E. Estuve, uh, in preterite, is, uh, if I say estuve enferma, it means I got sick. It happened like that. Because preterite happens like that, okay? So it won't mean I was sick for a while. It'll mean I became, I got sick all of a sudden. It's, it's that event of me starting to get all green in the gills, okay? Um, poder, if it's affirmative, if it doesn't have a no, is manage, meaning you actually got something to happen. You managed to get something done. Querer uh, in uh, preterito means tried, not wanted. Okay, we talked about querer usually being quería, quería, quería most of the time, because most of the time we when we use querer in the past, we're saying I wanted to do something. And if what you mean is how you felt, I wanted, that feeling of I wanted, but in the past, It's got to be imperfecto. When, so when I put querer into preterito, it means tried. It means you made an attempt. That's the way it is. But if I put a no in front of querer and it's no querer, but preterito, it means refused. Yikes. You'll see some examples in a bit. Saber in imperfecto, again, is that mental process of I knew, I knew. There's no beginning or end to I knew something. But saber in Preterito means found out, found out, and found out like realized, 
found out happens like that. It's a sudden light going on in your brain. Oh, I found out. Wow. I, I found out he had a girlfriend on the side. Boom. I found that out. Okay. And tener, uh, usually, you know, you, you saw a whole video on how querer is usually imperfecto. Tener is usually imperfecto. If people do use it in pretérito, it means received, got something. Something was actually delivered to somebody. Okay. Uh, so here are some things that will show you the flippy flop, how they differ in a sentence. Se la verdad. Uh, I know the truth. That's right now. Sabía la verdad. Uh, I knew the truth. I knew what the truth was. I don't know when it started or it ended. I just knew it's a mental process. I don't have a beginning or end on. But supe la verdad. Supe is the, is the preterito of saber. Supe looks pretty weird because it's got a P, not a B, and it's got a U. What the heck is going on there? You see how weird saber looks in preterito. Supe la verdad turns out uh, to be an example of I found out the truth because it happened this quick. Okay. So I haven't even really taught you saber in preterito because you don't hear it very often. How often, if, if you... If you're having a conversation, how often does somebody say, I knew, he knew, she knew, we didn't know, versus found, uh, found out? You hear somebody knew something way more than you say found out. But the yo form for found out is supe. Supe. Okay. You won't hear it as much. This es sabido la verdad. You're not going to hear people saying that in conversation very much. Maybe if you're in Spain, but not in Mexico. Okay. Uh, tener, some examples. Tiene una carta? He has a letter. Tenían una carta? He had a letter. Tener, usually, like 90% of the time, you're going to hear it in imperfecto. But, uh, tuvo una carta? He received a letter. Tuvo? which is the preterito, and look how weird that is. Tuvo does not look like it comes from tener. It's a very irregular verb. You don't hear tener used a whole lot in preterito. When you do, it means received, actually got it in his hot little hands. It's an event. Somebody forked it over and put it in his hands. Tenía una carta. He received a letter. Okay? Bien? And we're not looking at these present perfect examples, by the way. Okay. Querer. Uh, querer. No quieres la invitación. You don't want the invitation. No querías la invitación. You didn't want the invitation. Querer. Most of the time, you're going to hear it in imperfecto. No quisiste la invitación. Look how weird querer is in Preterito. No quisiste, you refused. Querer in a negative sense in preterito drastically changes the meaning. It means somebody refused. Okay. The yo form for querer in preterito is quise. Q U I S E. Quise. Quise. Uh, uh, wow. Quise lavar, la, uh, quise lavar el carro. I tried to wash the car. I tried. Quise. I tried. Uh, it's very different from quería. I wanted to. That's talking about how I felt. How I felt is fuzzy beginning and end. Okay. Uh, no quise lavar la coche or el coche, perdón. Uh, uh, no quise lavar el coche is uh, I refused to do something. So no, with a preterite querer, is really, really specific in how it changes the meaning. And poder can be pretty, pretty funky too. Most of the time you hear poder in the past with imperfecto. Uh, we go from presente, pueden hacerlo. They are able to do it, or we could say they can do it. 
podían hacerlo, they were able to do it, meaning they had the ability, but that doesn't really tell me if it happened or not. Podían hacerlo said they were able, but did it happen? They had the ability, okay? Pudieron hacerlo, pudieron is our preterite for poder, and that is going to be they actually tried and they got it done. They managed to do it. They wanted to, they could do it, and by God, it happened. They made it happen. Poder in pretérito means they made it happen, okay? Uh, not just they were able to, okay? It, so these are verbs that change quite a lot in meaning. Um, I'll send you a list. Don't feel you must know all of them perfectly, but be aware that they're out there. And we're not even going to practice it because what I want you to have stamped in your brain is that is whatever people are going to use a higher percentage of the time. People will, for a much greater percentage of the time, use querer en imperfecto, quería, wanted. Poder en imperfecto, podía, was able to, had the ability to do something, okay? Uh, tener. Most of the time, vast, vast percentage higher. Imperfecto, tenía, right? Tenía una familia fantástica. I had a great family, okay? So uh, what you want to go for is things that are just you know, what's, what's the high percentage? What's the high recurrence rate? What are the things you're most likely to hear most of the time, the highest percent of times you're talking with or listening to somebody? Okay, bien, sí. Juanita. Pregunta, did you say with a star, if you say estuve enfermo, you're saying I got sick versus estaba enferma, means I was sick. Si, bien. So two uh, different subtle meanings. Very subtle. Estaba, uh, estuve enferma, uh, I got sick. Uh, now, I could also be signaling maybe that it was a short period of time. Mm -hmm. right? um, por ejemplo, estuve enferma uh, 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 ayer, uh, estuve enferma ayer uh, solamente por la noche, only at, only at night, only overnight. And then I might use estuve, pretérito de estar, the preterite of a star, uh, to indicate that it was a very short period of time. But often it's that process of, uh oh, suddenly I turned a corner and I got ill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, we often think of ourselves when I got ill, that that was kind of an event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, you know, wow, I was sick. Now you're describing how you were feeling and it's more of a descriptive nature. Yeah. Bien. Um, okay. See, sí, Patricia. Um, what if you were trying to say, which do you use the estuve, um, if you got sick from eating this? Oh, see. Sí. Okay. Exacto. Okay. Por ejemplo. Por ejemplo. Por ejemplo. Aquí. A ver. Por ejemplo. Sí. And, and again, you know, you take your cue from the story that somebody's telling you. Uh, podría decir, I could say something like, por ejemplo. Um, ah. Fuimos ayer a un restaurante y uh, comí un plato con uh, camarones. 
Uh, we went to a restaurant last night and I ate a dish with shrimp. Um, uh, pero uh, me gustó. Wow, my reaction was, I liked that. Me gustó, right? Walked out of the restaurant. Wow, nice meal. Me gustó. Yeah, I liked that. Me gustó, pero uh, después, uh, después uh, estuve, uh, estuve enferma uh, durante la noche. I liked it, but wow, I got sick during the night. I got sick at night. So I'm telling you of a, you know, wow, I really liked it, but all of a sudden, boo, you know, something wrong with that dish. Uh, that's an example of when you might hear estar used in preterito. Uh, but, you know, most of the time, most of the time we hear estar in imperfecto, right? Higher percentage of imperfecto are verbs like estar, querer, tener, poder. Higher percentage of the time. Because the higher percentage time of the time, we're describing what was going on as opposed to giving an event with those verbs. Eso es. So you want to know which verbs are likely to be in that imperfecto camp and which verbs are a higher percentage likely to be in preterito camp. It kind of helps so that you can see that coming. Okay. Um, otro ejemplo. I want to show you one more example about these verbs that do a flippy flop. Uy. Puedo engrandecer. Wow. Can I make this bigger? Okay, I'm not sure we'll make it. Is this like way too small to see? I will send you the no, link I'm, for this. I'm okay. It's yeah. kind of small. Okay. Good, okay. Yeah. I want to show you conocer because conocer is a, a, a really definite uh, uh, thing in the two different tenses. And it, uh, that is something you may hear either way. It really depends on the event somebody is talking about. Conocer, preterite, met somebody. Imperfecto, used to know a, peop, a person or a place. Because remember, we use conocer to talk about places like uh, um, uh, conozco Chicago. I, I know my way around Chicago, right? Uh, and this is, a, yeah, this one is a pretty much the easiest to understand. Okay, so if conocer means to know people or things, the preterite implies a completed action or a singular action that is not continuing. And therefore, it has to be a first time. So this is probably the easiest out of all these verbs to explain. And maybe one of the easiest ones where you you may see a definite flippy flop between preterito or imperfecto, depending on with what the story is, as somebody's telling you. So in that sense, you can't continue to know a person in the preterite because that's not how preterite works, okay? Instead of knowing someone, it becomes came to know or to meet someone. So the act of continuing to know someone is thus imperfect because it's an action that happened in the past, but it may or may not be, can be continuing up to the present. So in other words, you don't really know. It, it's not a bookended kind of action. I knew him. Do I still talk to him? I don't know. You know, I knew him for a long time. How long? I don't know. I'm not talking about the first time. I'm talking just saying I knew him. So it's going on and on and on with no definite beginning and end. And therefore, conocer would have to be imperfecto. Say you knew somebody. Okay. So you'll get examples like this. Conocí a tus padres. I met your parents. But conocí a tus padres. Same exact sentence, just flipping the verb tense. Yeah, conocí a tus padres. I used to know your parents. In other words, I knew your parents. Oh, I knew them. You know, maybe they're not with us anymore. <laughs> I knew your parents. I used to know them, right? Uh, nos conocimos el lunes. 
we met on Monday. We met the very first time on Monday. Nos conocíamos. We used to know each other. We knew each other. Okay. Those are examples with people. Here are some examples with places, because we use conocer with places as well. Conocí Nueva York. I came to know Nueva York, uh, you know, probably a brief visit. Yeah. Uh, conocí a Nueva York. I used to know New York. Uh, yeah, I, I knew my way around New York. Conocí a Nueva York. So conocer is probably the easiest one to understand in that, that flip from pretérito, one-time event, to imperfecto, something that was continuous and going on for a fuzzy, indefinite amount of time. Uh, and, and, you know, if you care to go through all the minutia, yeah, um, I would say you can check this out, but check out saber because that is, is like conocer going to be a little bit easier to explain, right? Those two verbs, saber and conocer, that both mean to know, they take on definite meanings in imperfecto that are different from the meanings in preterito. And it's a little bit easier to understand how those meanings are different. So I'll send you this page and tell you just really kind of focus on the saber and the conocer side of that. And, and don't force yourself to memorize all those examples. But those two verbs, check them out because those are the two that you're quite likely to hear maybe one way or the other. Bien? Sí. Ah, fantastico. Muy bien, muy bien. I did not get to que. I think when we start in spring, we're going to... Um, we're going to talk in the spring. We're going to start some things, which uh, uh, it'll probably take us a couple of sessions to get into this, really, because it's a somewhat complex topic. I had a really good question about, you know, uh, when do I use K or el K or el cual or oh, cual? Um, if you look up cual, uh, I think we're going to start with que and cual first. Because que and cual, cual means which? Mm, kind of, but not really all the time. Sometimes in Spanish, we'll use cual, even if you look it up in the dictionary and it says which. And the way we would say that same sentence in English would really be what? Even though cual, when you first, the first definition you see probably isn't going to say what. It'll say which. There's a real difference in Spanish for when we use cual and when we use que. And uh, looking up just the definitions of those two words does not always help. You need to see many, many examples of when we use them. And I can tell you quite simply, oh, if you use qual, you're picking something out of a group. But to you in English, you're saying, this doesn't look like picking out of a group to me. But it is, in fact, what you're doing. But you'll see from the examples. And I'll, I'll give you some setups because structurally, how those sentences are set up helps you to understand whether you use que or whether you use cual, because we may translate into English both cual and que as meaning what, but clearly cual and que are not the same word. So <laughs> uh, it will help a little bit. And then we'll morph into some of these little words of how they combine together and whether or not it's important or to just have that as kind of packed behind the gray matter. Que and cual, very useful to actually know how to use properly. Helpful because it helps somebody to understand you immediately. Wrapping it up with lo or el or that. <laughs> 
helpful to kind of know, but have it as peripheral knowledge. And maybe not, I must have this at my fingertips right away. Bien? Okay? Yeah. yeah. But Ken Kwan is worthy of uh, actually quite a lot of practice because um, it is one of those things that people tag you as as a beginner speaker, whether you use K or qual properly. Ah. And just knowing an English definition doesn't help. Okay? <laughs> Bien? Bien. Gracias. So we'll do that because actually we do a lot of questions with what? What? Wow. What's in here? What's your birthday? What's his name? Uh, what kind of car do you have? Um, what's going on? <gasps> I know what he means. All those different what's are said different ways. And we use those kinds of what's a lot. So we're going to try to like separate them out and figure out how to use them comes come April <laughs> and Abril. Okay. Bien. Fantastico. Okay. Alguna pregunta. Any other last parting question? Si o no? No. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, since we have kind of a hiatus, I am going to try to find a little story for you to listen to because we got a week off. Yeah. Don't tune in next week because next week we won't have class. People who, <laughs> the instructors who were absent will teach a makeup class, but we don't have an actual class next week. So uh, I'll send you uh, kind of a longer story to listen to. Uh, the one I have in mind is kind of a guessing game mystery kind of thing. I have to listen to it again to make sure it's not uh, not too difficult. Uh, but I think, yeah, it'll, it'll work in a little bit of past. It'll be kind of fun. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, those old stories you used to tell about you, a man walks into the room and he sees, what is it? A bowl, of water. a bowl of water. There you go. What happened? Yeah. A bowl of water and a puddle and you know what happened and da, 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 da. it's kind of like that. Uh, and it'll use a fair amount of pass. So I'm thinking that's going to be the one I will send for you. Okay. Todo bien? All good? Okay. Oh, oh, great. I want to tell you something. Si. I want to thank you for teaching me a new English word. Ah. I never knew that a, hi a hiatus could be a gap between semesters. Mm -hmm. I thought that meant chaos. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's your time off. <laughs> it's kind it's of like, yeah. it's kind of like vacaciones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, it's just our time off. Yeah. Okay. Ah, bien. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bueno.